for the Israeli government or I'm a propagandist. I don't think there's any evidence I'm either of those things. I'm curious who you think I'm doing While the propaganda While we're having this conversation, 3,000 peers, while we're having this back and forth, 3,000 840 Palestinians have been ruthlessly slaughtered. I look out for these types of uh, conversational tactics so much now. Anytime I hear people do this, I very immediately start throwing up uh, red flags. Um, when you're refusing to engage with a question or you like pivot into weird stuff like this, or if you have an inability to directly and somewhat concisely answer a question, um, I immediately assume that you are functioning in bad faith and you're trying to sell me something different than what's factually correct. There's something else going on. Hassan does this a lot. 3,840 Palestinians have been ruthlessly slaughtered in the last incursion into Gaza. I feel like this is an incredibly selfish, self-centered conversation to have. You asked me to be on here. You wanted, you wanted to hear my perspective. I'm willing to give it to you. I don't want to talk about like whether the I don't want to talk about Noam Chomsky style manufacturing okay. consent conversations okay. about how like what like what even happened here. Also, has he never seen Piers Morgan before? This is a very standard Piers Morgan interview. We watched him do this to Tate, to Pearl, uh, to everybody. This is just how Piers Morgan. There's a style of I don't know if I would call it a British new style, but I feel like I see British people do this a lot, where it's it's very railroady, like. I'm gonna ask you. No, no, I'm gonna ask you this question. No, no, no. I'm gonna ask you this question. I'm gonna, no, 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 no. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you. No, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna ask you this question, and you're gonna answer this question because of this thing that I saw. Right? It's very. And he, Piers has done this a few times in this conversation. It's like a. I don't. Again, I don't know if it's a British style, but I feel like I see British interviewers do it a lot. There's probably are some American interviews do it, but Piers is very, very, very good at this style of conversation. I feel like I should know that coming into this. <clears throat> oh. The media is operating listen, in the, in the, I, listen, uh, the behest of capital. You were the guy, listen, I think you were the guy that called have. me. There are dead people. Listen, Hassan, I only asked you because you're the guy that called me a propagandist and called me a baboon in the suit. I was curious as to why. You don't want to say I who, know, I'm, but, who I'm but doing I, the propaganda for. We'll move on. We'll move on. I agree with I you. Said you. I said, there's a bigger, there's a bigger picture here. Let's move I on. Said that. <laughs> I love the Hassan laugh. That's my favorite thing. I wish I could take around. The Hassan laugh is so good. Doing the I, propaganda for. We'll move on. We'll move on. I agree with I you. Said you. I said there's a bigger there's a bigger picture here. Let's move I on. Said that let's take a short you... break. Hassan, let's take a short break. I want to come okay. back. I want to talk to you about what happened on October the seventh. Get your reaction to that. Welcome back, Hassan. Piker is still with me. Hassan, I want to just play you a clip of something that you said about the uh, October seventh terror attacks, and in particular the attack at the music festival, which killed two hundred and sixty people. You look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing two hundred and sixty people at a music festival. No, you're right, man. That just happened on its own because, like, bad guys wanted to do bad things. You're right. Dude, if they f subjugated you to a open-air prison your whole f life, you're going to break out eventually when you realize that there is no other way to get out of it. I mean, it sounds to me there, Hassan, that you are... Hey, Algomancer, thanks for being a tier 4 sub, buddy. Uh, ...in some way saying they had it coming. Were you? Um, no, I wouldn't say that they had it coming. I think that uh, Michael Brooks used to say, uh, analysis is not justification. And while obviously civilian casualties and, and horrific barbaric acts that were committed on October 7 are completely unacceptable, uh, the, the important thing to make sure that it never happens again is to analyze what are the conditions as to, as to how it happened to begin with. And I think uh, Ehud Barak is going to be on uh, mm. in a little bit as well, or maybe he's on before yeah, he is, me. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm and I'm almost certain that while he has held the keys to the conversation and held uh, the the levers of the power in this conversation in many key and critical points, uh, I, I would go so far as to say that he is among many others who also recognize. I also really don't like, and Hassan has always had this problem, right? Even back on the Rash Royale days, I think this is one of the things he got so mad at he rambles so much without answering a question. It drives me crazy when people do this. I don't know if it's a, like they're just dysfunctional communicators, like they're, they're just not good at it, or if it's an intentional thing to obfuscate and avoid answering the question. I can't tell, I'm not sure. It's really hard for me to tell. Recognize that the Bibi Netanyahu administration is responsible. This is not just my assessment. This is 85% uh, of the uh, Israeli population's assessment at the time. Uh, this is years and years and years of refusing to negotiate with one of my I, I think i brought this up before i think this was a teacher i had in high school one of this is one of the things that I, I wish every single teacher in college and high school would do this i had a teacher i love that they did this i think it was for my english class uh i think it was ap english 4 i think she said 
when she assigned you papers, this is what she said. She said, this is the topic that you need to write about. And in order for you to answer the essay, the question uh, appropriately, your length is probably gonna be two pages. That's what she would say. Um, but the cool thing was that she never strictly enforced length of assignments. She just said that you probably need about this much to do it. If you could do it with more brevity, that'd be fine. But I hated, until that teacher, I never thought about how much I hated teachers that would just arbitrarily enforce, like, this needs to be eight paragraphs. This needs to be 4,000 words. This needs to be 10 pages. It's like, like, what do I need to, why do I have to fit, like, just what is the subject? What am I supposed to address? Let's, let's start with that, and then we kind of, like, go from there. But I noticed for a lot of talkers, talkers, speakers, I know this a lot when I debate, because people speak slow and they're not concise. Just answer the question directly in as few words as possible and with substance. You don't have to word vomit out 50 million different analogies, metaphors, things like other peripheral facts. Just answer the question. I hate it when people do that. Hassan is a yapper, okay? He does this a lot, yeah. Palestinian Authority, take, don't take my word for it. Take no, no, listen, I would agree, listen, I would agree again. In a closed door conversation with Likud members, he yeah, said listen. that if you want to thwart any kind of Palestinian nation state, you must do everything you can to only negotiate with Hamas. We control how high the how high the fire goes. He has given cash to Hamas right. by way of Qatar. Uh, there is no bigger fan of Hamas than Bibi Netanyahu, which uh, I hope one day you can maybe uh, interview and then you'll ask him to. No, no, I, I uh, actually did interview him a few months ago, and I, and I did government. actually spell out to him that there have been a lot more Palestinian deaths this year so far, up to the point of the interview than Israelis and what he intended to do about it. He said then he didn't believe in collective responsibility, which is- What, like, what the f was this answer? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Now this hot phrase in this whole uh, crisis about whether you would hold all people in Gaza responsible for Hamas. Interesting to see- if How many different people did Hassan evoke that answer? There were like two or three, one was Michael Brooks, one was another guy, and then was there a third person? Like, yeah, Jesus. You pronounce Qatar way better than this native Middle Eastern, true. I'm pretty sure if you just say Qatar, you're probably close. If you just say Qatar, you're close than most people. Just say Qatar. The end of the actual pronunciation is like Qatar, Qatar, Qatar or something? Qatar? I don't know. Just say Qatar. Or just pronounce it, yeah, f it, we're English, who cares? You know, f all that shit. The problem with that approach is that kids don't understand what it means to have a good answer to the topic, so they use word count to determine how complex the answer should be. Maybe. But I feel like if you're not ideologically drawn into one side, going back to the politics, I think that... Like, if you like a certain person, you'll always like the way they answer because they're telling you what you want to hear. But I think other people in the middle when they hear, because one of the compliments that I see a lot when I'm on shows is people say that I'm pretty concise or I answer questions like with brevity. And they, they seem to appreciate that in comment sections that I see. Rather than I'm going to, you know, ramble for two hours for every single question that I'm asked. Yeah. Okay, sorry, let me back a little bit. Responsibility which is now this hot phrase in this whole uh, crisis about whether you would hold all people in Gaza responsible for Hamas. Interesting to see if Wait, when they... Can I ask it, well, let me just finish you, my point. Do you, do if you they do, they launch that? a ground invasion. It'd be interesting to see if they keep to that word. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, a defender of what Bibi Netanyahu has been doing in Israel. In the last year, his attack on the credibility and integrity of the Supreme Court, I think, has been a disgrace. And I think it has fractured society in Israel. I also think that it's caused so much social unrest and had such big protests that you could argue it's taken the eye off the ball of the people who should have been defending the border uh, because they've been trying to sort out what's been going on domestically, internally inside Israel. So I think it's a catastrophic failure of intelligence, of security, of defense, all of those things. I'd be amazed, frankly, if Netanyahu survives this. So I'm certainly not here to defend him, even if you do view me as a stenographer for his government. Uh, my, my, my question for you, I think, is this. Is that I've had a lot of problems trying to get people on the pro-Palestinian side to separate two things. That you can say, as I believe and you believe, that the Palestinians have been maltreated for decades. That the situation where they are effectively... I mean, I don't even call it an occupation because Israelis aren't in Gaza. They pulled out in 2005, but they still control the ability of Gaza. That is, well, see, this is finish. why I call you propaganda. Well, well, no, uh -oh. uh -oh. I'm just saying the phraseology is confusing to me because the reality is Israel exercises control over people in Gaza. It allows them in and out. It allows them to turn on the tap of water and so on and so on. I get all that. They don't actually... Are you leaving? Be careful, don't I? live there because they can't live side by side That's with each other. That's why it's called an open-air prison. Right, I, I don't That's disagree with... That's why they call it the world's largest open-air yeah, prison. Yeah, but Hassan, I don't disagree with you. And I've, I've pointed this okay. out 
for a long time as a journalist. So we don't, we don't disagree about the appalling plight of Palestinian people. Um, but the issue comes that if you can't separate that ongoing dispute between Israel and Palestine from the absolutely appalling barbarism of October the 7th, which was on a whole different scale to anything we've seen, where 1,400 people, Holocaust survivors, babies in their, in their cribs, you know, young women taken, uh, tortured, abused, shot, beheaded, we, we, it was reported, and so on. If we can't... Why? Is everybody, like... Do we all, like, graduate to doing the Tucker Carlson face? Do I do this when I'm on interviews? The Tucker Carlson face? Live is not a reaction? <laughs> look at that collectively oh. and with a with a, a general humanity and agreement that that is an absolute atrocity then there's something wrong with this and i find that the, the tribalism on both sides is now so toxic and so frenzied that you get people who literally can't we've had a bunch of actors right signing this statement saying they want a ceasefire in gaza and calling israel war criminals and so on but they don't say a word about the Hamas attacks that precipitated this. And I find that but you really, agree hard, with them, right? really hard to accept. But you what? But you, but you, but do you agree with them? If, if they had said, for example, that October 7 attacks were brutal and, and massacres occurred, and then they said everything else, that Israel is committing war crimes, would you agree with them? I, well, it, okay, here's what I would honestly say about that. Is Israel not allowed to defend itself from the worst terror attack we've seen since 9-11? Is it not allowed to defend itself it's just odd. after 1,400 people in Israel are butchered in that way? And the question then, if you assume that they are able to defend themselves, as any Pierce, free democratic the, country, that is the then, then the question Israeli State Department line, Assad, that me, is the IDF's then, line, that Assad, is the line that everyone Assad, let me ask channels. you this. It then becomes a question of how can they defend themselves? If their mission now is to get rid of Hamas, a terror organization that's committed one of the worst acts of terror ever seen, if that is their stated aim, mm -hmm. then what they are doing is consistent with that, isn't it? Jesus. No. Here's why this is actually an abject failure, and this is not just my perspective on the matter. I'm just a, you know, dumb idiot uh, with a Twitch stream who who is live reacting to the news and trying to make sense of everything. I hate that abdication of responsibility. It is so cowardly. Bro, you make millions of dollars doing political commentary. The difference in our mindsets is so crazy. Like, I feel pretty bad when I get things wrong or I fuck things up because I make so much money now doing this and I have so much influence. As silly or stupid as that sounds as being just a YouTuber, but I mean, it's true. Like, there are so many people looking to you for guidance on these political takes. For you to, like, shirk all responsibility so that you can simultaneously make money being a political commentator while having none of the responsibility, it's like one of the grossest and most blatant uh, like abdications of responsibility while still gaining all the benefits I've ever seen in my life. I hate that line. I don't know why he's been using it so much. He does it with Ethan too. Oh, we don't have any influence. We just blah, 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 blah. God, I hate it. Oh, it's so cringe to me. It's actually an abject failure. And this is not just my perspective on the matter. I'm just a, you know, dumb idiot uh, with a Twitch stream who, who is live reacting to the news and trying to make sense of everything as it's ongoing. I usually have a policy of not covering breaking news. And, and uh, sometimes that policy is violated. I'm pretty sure Hassan almost exclusively covers breaking news. Am I wrong about that? I feel like uh, almost every time there's breaking stuff going on, you turn on Hassan's stream and it's like the title is uh, whatever the breaking news is of the day. But that's an unbelievable, that's an unbelievable statement. But not covering breaking news and, and uh, sometimes that policy is violated. But uh, ultimately, I am not uh, held up by the same journalistic standards, even though I think I do a much better job than most other news outlets in, uh, in general. So let me just say this. Yeah, there was like a thousand comment clip, I think, or a thousand comment thread when this, uh, when this exploded, yeah. Wait, we'll do a live streamer reaction to Hassan saying that. I usually have a policy of not covering breaking news. And, and uh, sometimes that policy is violated, but uh, ultimately I am not uh, held up by the same journalistic standards, even though I think I do a much better job than most other news outlets. You said Israel has a right to defend itself. Absolutely zero people think that this is a ridiculous statement. However, how Israel is defending itself is collective punishment. Now, collective punishment in the form of depriving 2.2 million people of electricity, collective punishment in the form of depriving them of, of water. Of 
I'd like to see your views on all of this after doing some decent research. There's strong claims on both sides, but with all the current or ongoings, I'm getting more and more pro-Israel. Yeah, I hate, I think there's an Ayla tweet that funnily enough is kind of mirror my position. I hope I'm not like mind myself too much to like take a contrary position to people on the left, but I feel like the strongest argument that the left has is that Israel should have never started there in the 40s, which like maybe is like an okay, like if we go back to that time period, we might say like, this is probably a bad idea, but it really does feel like past that, the, the arguments in favor of Israeli action are so much stronger than the arguments in favor of the rest of the Arab world in that region or the Palestinians even. Like, it seems like overwhelmingly favoring one side, but I might feel differently when I start like digging into the individual conflicts. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. Of food, collective punishment of... What about settlers in the West Bank? I still haven't heard good rationale for why Israel like is so aggressively supporting settlers moving into the West Bank, other than just territorial expansion, which seems bad. But um, there might be, re I'd have to look out, but okay. Punishment in the form of depriving 2.2 million people of electricity, collective punishment in the form of depriving them of, of water, of food, collective punishment of uh, in the form of 51 people dying. Oh, shit. Fuck. I'm so sorry. I saw this quote in chat. And thoughts on from the river to the sea. Okay. A lot of people, I, I don't know if people know what this means all the time, um, but just so you guys have an awareness. When people are saying, um, when people say from the river to the sea, just so you know, if anybody's ever saying that as part of a, um, as part of like a, a, a protest or part of a pro-Palestine movement, um, from river to the sea means that they want all of uh, all of Israel to belong to Palestine. They want um, th uh, they want Palestine to be uh, completely ran by the Palestinian people, and for Israel as a state to be eliminated. Um, th that's what like from the from the river to the sea means. Like this whole area from the uh, from the Jordan River to the uh, to the sea is what they want. <clears throat> Fuck, I should actually find out where on this fucking map the Jordan River runs, I think. But that's what um that's what uh that's what from the river to the sea means. It means the, the complete and total elimination of Israel. Just so you know. That's yes, that is exactly what that means. The literal border with the West Bank. Okay, it's this thing here. This is the Okay, maybe this is okay. From here to the sea. So the destruction or the elimination of the state of Israel, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. It's getting popular, but don't you think it's a catchphrase? If you want to say that it's a harmless catchphrase, I'm not buying that because when somebody has like a tattoo and people are going out and saying like, well, actually in 1949, there was one Panzer Division tank that had that logo on it. So if you have this, you're actually a Nazi. No, I don't accept that's just a catchphrase. If you say from the river to the sea, you want, you're advocating for the elimination of the state of Israel, but that's fine. If you, if that's a position you can have, some people think that the state of Israel should be eliminated or shouldn't exist or should all be Palestinians, but just like own it, own that position. We can argue about that. Um, don't pretend that you're saying something different, you know? Food, collective punishment of uh, in the form of 51 people dying in the West Bank where, you know, there is no Hamas in the West Bank and yet 51 people have died because in the West Bank settlers that are occupying Palestinian territory in violation of the international law, settlers who are doing an act of colonial terrorism, and this is not my statement on it, this is international law, that are doing horrifying things by simply just existing there and, and maintaining the presence uh, with a, with an occupying force in the form of IDF, who is ritualistically humiliating Palestinians uh, uh, in in a in a structure that B'Tselem, an Israeli organization, calls the permit regime, where every waking moment of of uh, Palestinians' lives in the West Bank are absolute hell, where they have no legal recourse. That's not really as controversial as what other people say it means, which is to call for a cleansing the land of Jews, essentially for a genocide. That's where I've seen the complaints. If everybody was to call for a one-state solution, it wouldn't be as controversial. Well, maybe. I'm trying to give the most charitable framing of that. The, the, the least charitable framing is from river to the sea means a Jewish genocide in the Middle East. That's like the most extreme. But I'm, tr I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to give the most. I don't know. I don't think that a person in the West that's saying from the river to the sea, uh, like Palestine, I don't think that person wants Jewish people to be genocided. So I'm trying to give them a more favorable version of it. Um, is this boner box? Yeah. Fuck. Does anybody remember what I wanted to ask him earlier? I had a specific question for you earlier. Oh yeah, I just had a question. 
I'm just curious. This is, um, I mean, obviously it's related to this, but it's more like in a vacuum. Let's say that there was a, um, we'll say military slash terrorist organization operating out of a hospital. You know that there are important operations there, but you know also that there are four to 500 sick people in that hospital. Um, you've got to make a call on whether to bomb the hospital. Um, you, you, you'll kill all the civilians, right? You, can, you do a knock bomb, you warn them, nobody leaves. They're like, nope, our people are here, they're sick, we're not moving for whatever reason. Do you think it's still ethical in, in like a time of conflict to bomb that hospital? Or do you think the collateral damage makes it unacceptable? Or do you think there's some like calculation